Uyin sa kanil unok kahil ko. Ukah na lilok tup sa hil. Usa ta lilok te chakil. Usot lung chen nai hil. Uwagi. Upala lung kabil tush si hong. Tush kentsut. Huwag sa noob tumeng kakas. Hol kabo. Yitil kakas et stanob. Chup yitil narko hala achop. Yitil narko hala achil. Yitil narko narko. Nikaucho, nikokao, yitle awayas kao. Le mas kupe tukulak hala achilo. Le yonkol le narko. Mat yap lung yanti. Mat ay kalo. Hat pahano, yitle mas aliko. Pas kupe tukichile hala achilo. Kusto le noktaan be kanobo. Le katsyo bo. Le kato bo. Yitle kay kukulo. Kuntel, le nukule tuskut sa atin nekte. Tukultik. Hal kabila kuskinti behlay alik zoki leyonal baj zoki kutul ukinile taktam shok habo kinti dog kapnalo yeya shub al tukul nilahung al habo ba wabisentenario ukinil kantan tam Kuch ay hindi natal kiik, upat ay natal topa kiti ma. Talik, wing lang, deklumo, dekasubo, mineralo, usokil krim, soko, boba tilog, dek tilog, yeten no bilaw. Tukang hindi debas kaya nagalog, nagpahde na kaso, yeten tiu al magtani, yekin sa mago. Oh, si mom, si mom. Le ah kala ano ba? Le po ipo ko ba? Ujumil ka ang le telebati ba? Le kaka ano yolo? Tu yolo ang ukilit ang kitch kena niyo. Fark, narco, marco, teyas, tegno, para, hanamaki, ahtok, wayak, tiwinki, tiwiniki, betam, begyum sile. Bisho suti, narco, topanki, 1780-1805-1973 Ulak Kinsilob Liksahil Masawal Batilob Mas Ah Batilob Yetel Kalil Batilob Haiti Slum Favela Comuna Barriada Cuarto Mundo Chancup Atalton Ochel Kubetik Dukul Tunok Kahipo Yucatán, tu final el mayo, tu quien el 29, tu Fabio el 2009. On the record, has reported every twist and turn in the escalating Mexican drug war for more than a year. And today, Mexico announced the arrest of seven suspected members of a drug gang accused of participating in the massacre of 72 people. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has a grim assessment of the situation. These uh, drug uh, cartels are now showing more and more indices of insurgency. Could the solution to the ferocious drug war in Mexico be legalizing drugs? Join us live as Tim Patrick, Time Magazine's Miami and Latin America Bureau Chief. Good evening, Tim. Is legalization of drugs on the table in Mexico? Oh, yeah, and it's been on the table for many years. I mean, uh, since uh, the beginning of the last decade, it was really under the presidency of Vicente Fox, uh, but that got derailed. But uh, as you said, because things are spiraling out of control again in Mexico, uh, it's, it's, it's very much a, a consideration again. And there are really two reasons. One is that Mexicans, uh, as is the case in the United States, they feel that they're just spending too much money uh, arresting and imprisoning people for possession of drugs when they could be spending those resources uh, doing a better job of tracking, uh, arresting, and, and imprisoning and convicting uh, the people who are actually trafficking the drugs and committing all, the, all that bloodshed in Mexico. But the more important reason uh, is, is that they feel um, that uh, legalizing drugs in Mexico would sap 
billions of dollars of, of revenue away from the drug cartels. And that is really, in the long run, what's going to solve this problem for Mexico. It's not so much arresting all of the capos and all of the drug lords. It's sapping them of that billions of dollars of revenue that allows them to buy the weapons and buy off all the police and political officials uh, that they can in Mexico. And as I said, that's really the long-term solution. And that's one of the reasons that this is probably going to come to fruition in Mexico, I think, this time. There's there, a lot of people there's a big difference between marijuana and cocaine, right. methamphetamine. Uh, when you talk about legalization of drugs, are you talking about cocaine, methamphetamine? Is that another possibility or are you just talking about marijuana? I think the, the more politically palatable solution for both Mexico and the United States, if they were to go to legalization route, would be to start with marijuana and, and probably just stay there. Uh, and there are two reasons. One, uh, marijuana is considered, uh, you know, not as, as as addictive and dangerous as cocaine and methamphetamine and heroin. Uh, so it's it's more politically acceptable uh, to legalize that drug. And number two, uh, marijuana, uh, unbeknownst to a lot of people who think that cocaine is what brings the car drug cartels all their money, marijuana actually accounts for more than half of the revenues that the drug cartels get. So if you were to legalize marijuana in Mexico and the United States, you would be taking uh, about $20 billion, theoretically, of the $40 billion that the drug cartels in Mexico earn each year away from them. And as I said before, that would do uh, a lot to sap them of the revenues that, that, that uh, make them so powerful. If you, if you make an arrest or if you murder or if you, we should, uh, you shoot down one of the drug cartel uh, leaders, are they quickly replaced so that this is just not a war that can even be won? That's one of the problems. I mean, it is good. I mean, let's face it, it's a good thing when a, when a drug lord like La Barbie uh, gets arrested because it does mess with the, uh, the structure, the, the leadership structure of these cartels. The problem is, is that the, 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 the trade is so lucrative in Mexico right now, and there are so many cartels uh, competing with one another that, as you said, it is very easy for a capo to be replaced. Uh, it's a good. It's a good. It has a good short-term effect uh, in, in terms of battling these cartels, but it doesn't have much of a, of, of a long-term effect. And that's why uh, increasingly you're seeing the U.S. and Mexican governments looking at more long-term solutions like legalization, things that 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 really go to taking the money away from the cartels, much like uh, you know we took the money away from Al Capone in the 1930s uh, when, when we uh, repealed prohibition. And that's really what brought uh, 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 criminals like him down uh, more than uh, the, you know, conventional interdiction. Tim, thank you very much. I hope you come back. This is a story that's not going away. Mexican President Felipe Calderón has publicly said he's willing to listen to arguments in favor of the legalization of drugs in an effort to end the drug war that's killed 28,000 people since 2006. I also take note of the debate that has come up here regarding the regulation of drugs. It is an essential debate. Firstly, I think it should be considered in a pluralistic democracy, and it is great that we have that in this country, and that the pros and cons should always be deeply analyzed. The arguments of one person and another are fundamental. Calderon's comments come a week after former President Vicente Fox called for the legalization of drugs in both Mexico and the United States. Another supporter of drug legalization in Mexico has been Alejandro Madrazo, professor at the National Autonomous University of Mexico. If you take drugs out of the criminal realm and therefore make trafficking illegal, then the person moving the drugs does not need to physically control territory by violent means to be able to ship the drugs. Of course violence would drop. Of course not all violence would be eliminated, but it would drop. It is elementary logic. The Mexican government has so courageously taken on uh, the drug cartels that have plagued both sides of the borders. It is absolutely critical that the United States joins as a full partner in dealing with this issue. At a time where all of us are dealing with 
uh, an extraordinary global recession where unemployment is on the rise, uh, where credit uh, has begun to shrink, uh, and where businesses are struggling. It is more important than ever that we work together. Well, I, I, I want to uh, welcome President Santos uh, here. Uh, this is the first time that we've met face to face, although we had a wonderful uh, conversation on the phone. Uh, he has already, uh, I think, in the short time that he's been in office, uh, shown remarkable leadership. Uh, yesterday was a big day uh, for the people of Colombia and, and those who are seeking peace uh, in the region uh, because of. Uh, uh, outstanding work by Colombian security forces. Uh, they were able to uh, to embark on a, a mission that resulted in the death of the leader of FARC. Uh, the people of Colombia have been plagued by uh, this uh, terrorist uh, insurgency for a very long time, uh, and as a consequence of the success of Colombian security forces, I think we now have the chance to uh, see continued uh, stability in Colombia and in the region, uh, and that uh, will create the prospects for peace and development uh, under uh, President Santos' leadership. So uh, we want to congratulate him. The friendship between our two countries is extraordinarily important to us. Uh, we are working not just uh, in dealing with things like uh, you know, drug interdiction, uh, but we're also interested in figuring out how we can continually improve our economic cooperation, our political cooperation and our people-to-people -people exchanges uh, so that we continue to deepen uh, these bilateral uh, ties. And, uh, I think, uh, we value Colombia very much, uh, our very special relation with the United States. Uh, we're coming ourselves into a new era. Now that uh, the security problem is more or less uh, solved, we can now turn to a more uh, progressive agenda, uh, social development, uh, prosperity of our people, uh, climate change, the environment, uh, those are the type of issues that we can now include in our agenda and we want to enhance our relation uh, to a true partnership uh, where Colombia and the U.S. can work together uh, in the region and outside the region for our mutual benefit. Las buenas relaciones nos benefician a todos, porque cuando los gobiernos disputan, son los pueblos los que sufren. Cada país de nuestra región tiene grandes fortalezas, pero si trabajamos juntos, podemos ser una gran potencia. Por eso, creemos firmemente en la unidad y la confraternidad que son el legado de nuestros libertadores y el imperativo de nuestros tiempos. Bien lo ha dicho el gran escritor mexicano y mi buen amigo Carlos Fuentes, los estados democráticos en América Latina están desafiados a hacer algo, a hacer algo que solo se esperaba de las revoluciones. El respeto a la vida es un mandato sagrado. El respeto a la libertad, a la integridad de las personas es una obligación ineludible de todo Estado que se llame democrático. La defensa de los derechos humanos, oígase bien, será un compromiso firme e indignable de mi gobierno. Y así lo reitero hoy ante mis conciudadanos, ante los honorables miembros del Congreso y ante la comunidad internacional. No lo hacemos por presiones o imposiciones. No, lo hacemos porque nos nace de la más profunda convicción democrática, ética y humana. Porque pasan los años, 
pasan los años, pasan los presidentes, tan grande como efímero es el poder.